All right, here we are today with a slightly weird challenge. Um, Crooked has asked me to play the 10 most toxic decks in the current metagame. So I'm going to play in the 10 things that I think are most miserable to play against, generally speaking. Um, I'm not going to have a Razorback deck in there, even though I do think Razorback is, is oppressive and overpowered right now. That's just because it's so new, so I didn't want to put it in. But a Razorback deck probably should be in here, but it isn't because it's just a bit new. So the decks we've got are Liang MG, which everybody knows is probably, as most of you probably know, is super, super miserable. Uh, we've got MSV Fortress. This is a horrible deck to play against, also with Liang. Uh, Borka Spam. Again, Liang. You'll, you'll see a, a theme here. Pretty much all Liang, because Liang is super broken. We've got Sandstorm Sniper Liang. Sandstorms with Liang are basically indestructible. And finally, Air Mammoth, the only deck not playing Liang. This one, I think, is actually also the least miserable to play against of all of them. But I know that Mammoth Hammerhead is a pretty miserable combo. And then for Nod, we've got Inferno Spam, which is probably the least toxic of these Nod decks. Uh, Giga Chuggy. Giga is a is a, a hor horrendous unit to play against, uh, generally speaking, and so is Chuggy. And with Oxana, this deck is super miserable. Uh, Jade Chems, as most of you know, this deck is, is the best in the metagame right now, probably. Well, the Razorback deck is the best, actually, but before the Razorback came out, it was this deck. Um, and you basically just kill their base without even getting Chems to it, which is just disgusting. Uh, artillery. Artillery is really oppressive. Once an Artillery gets out, you basically can't use ground units, so we've got that in here. And finally, Fanatic Aggro. This deck, I should probably put the Phantom in instead of the Banshee. Yeah, this deck is not that miserable, but Fanatics are really broken. So it can be pretty miserable to play against this. Double boosted Scorpion can just kill your Harvester before anything can defend it. Alright, so we're going to start with the MG deck. For no particular reason. Obviously, some of these decks are also way more miserable when they're overleveled. So that's not going to happen because we're in an event. Everything's going to be level 10. Uh, but for example, the Sandstorms and the Liang... Uh, sorry, the Sandstorms and the MG are both really, really miserable when they're higher level than your units. They're a lot less miserable when it's equal levels or under leveled. Three, two, one. Okay, so with the MG deck, we're going to open dogs to scout. We basically want to get the MG set up as quickly as possible. We are going to... Okay, so there is a laser drone. So we're not going to make our harvester. We're just going to go straight into barracks and build a missile trooper. He's probably going to be playing Venom if he's gone for laser drone opening. So we're not going to make the... Uh, we're not going to make the, um, the MG because we're expecting a Venom. So instead we're going to make multiple missiles and get them set up. Looks like he hasn't got a uh, harvester either. No harvester nod is generally better than no harvester GDI. But MG is the exception. MG is uh, is insane, no harvester. Whoops, so I accidentally let him get to my MG. That was a pretty big misplay. I really need my MG to survive here. All right, the MG does live. Now I just need to keep it uh, keep it alive until I can Liang drone it. All right, he's going to go after it with the laser drones. It's all right, we'll put the Liang drone down. Keeping this MG alive is really, really critical for the deck. This is why the deck is so miserable and toxic to play against. Because once you put the Liang drone on the MG, it becomes almost indestructible, which is really dumb. Okay, so we're going to need some some dogs to get rid of these uh, these rifles or lasers. Sorry. But as you can see, the uh, the MG kind of just holds everything. It's just all, all ground is useless against the MG. So yeah, if we both play no harvester, I'm going to be pretty happy. Right, there's his harvester. We're going to go block it because our harvest is not going to be out for a while. We're going to block it and then we're going to try and kill it with this pit bull. Right, nice. And then we'll get our own harvester. You can just play no harvester MG, but I'd rather just uh, get a harvester out. Alright, so we're going to farm his harvester. And then we're going to just set up some more MGs probably. Okay, another MG. MG is uh, beefy enough to walk into lasers and set up in front of them. It'll take some damage, but because we're Liang, we don't care. So we'll Liang here, heal up this MG, heal up the pit bull that's fighting the laser drones. And then we'll move it down here to heal up the MG. And at this point, it's very difficult for my opponent to realistically come back into the game. We've got MGs set up all over the place. 
that was a little bit sketchier than normal with an MG deck because I uh, misplayed at the start and didn't block my MG properly. But you can see how how ridiculous it is once the MG is set up. My opponent base is forced into using only air, and it's only a 30 cost unit, and it's indestructible with Liangron. So, <laughs> all right. So there's the MG deck. You are victor. All right, so now we're on the MSV Fortress deck. Again, we're going to scout with dogs. This deck is very susceptible to rushes uh, because obviously all of your units only kill like one thing. You haven't got missiles and rifles that are cheap and efficient early game. So the aim of this deck is going to be to set up the MSV uh, and then surround it with the two range units. We're going to get dogs to start charging. We don't have... Often these decks will also play a tech unit, uh, but I'm not playing a tech unit in my one. So that means we're going to be a little bit weak as an opponent's tech. Uh, generally speaking, this deck is quite bad against tech units. We're going to go for an MLRS and try and pressure his harvesters a little bit. Oh dear, he's gone for a Banshee opening. That's not good for me. Alright, so we need to wait until we can afford a Slingshot. We need to make sure this MLRS survives. Alright, so we're going to get the Slingshot. Take out this Banshee, he doesn't look like he knows how Slingshot works, so we'll move up with the MLRS and the uh, and the Slingshot. Alright, that, that Inferno is probably going to kill my MLRS. But he goes off the Slingshot instead, that's actually pretty good for me. So we're going to kill his Harvester here it looks like. Yep, very nice. So we know, what, what we need to do is lose some uh, lose some dogs for pop cap reasons, so we can get the MSV set up. Because the MSV Slingshot will beat up on these Infernos pretty easily. There's the Temple. We need to see what he goes for. We need to block with these dogs. Stop him getting the money. Hopefully he kills these dogs pretty soon because there's a basilisk. Uh-oh. I don't know how this works out against boosted slingshots. I think if I get a couple of boosted slingshots, I should be all right. It looks like he's not even trying to get the missile, so it's just going to be a free win. This would have been quite a difficult matchup if my opponent had, like, actually tried to contest the missile at all. But he didn't, so kind of a complete freebie. All right, it looks like the boosted slingshots would have wrecked the basilisk anyway. Okay, well, not the greatest example of MSV Fortress there, unfortunately. We didn't really set up the Fortress, because our opponent just did weird stuff. Uh, but yeah, you can imagine how, how that deck is miserable to play against. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to play the Borka Spam deck. Um, our plan is basically to go double Harvester. And just make uh, infinity forkers to kill everything on the ground. And then we have hammerheads to fight in the air. It depends what our opponent is doing. Um, this strategy is very good if your opponent doesn't have a good answer to the Orca Bomber. If he's playing Phantom, then that could be a problem. And what we're going to do is we're going to fight the first missile on one half. And then we're going to go for the second harvester for the Borker spam. Okay, so our opponent's also gone double harvester. No idea what his double harvest is for yet. Unit lost. But we'll uh, we'll charge the missile. We'll get the dogs on the. Uh, this deck plays dogs and riflemen because it wants to have really cheap, efficient answers to your opponent's cheap units, so that you can make more orca bombers. Pretty confident we're going to get the missile here. That's why I've built another harvester. Yeah, there's the missile. So now we're basically just going to spam orca bombers and hope that whatever his tech is, it loses to orca bombers. Alright, Cyborg. Cyborg does not really lose to Orca Bombers, sadly. Building online. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an Orca Bomber. And then whilst his Cyborgs are distracted by dogs, we'll fly over with the Orca Bomber. And that should kill it. Yeah, does just about take it out. We almost lose the Orca Bomber though, so I'll Liangro to heal it back up. We'll get some Rifleman in case he makes more Cyborgs. He's gone for a Banshee. Okay. Well, we do have Hammerhead. We just need to get to it. Another, orca, uh, another Cyborg there. Let's get the Rifleman in position. And we'll send the Orca Bomber. Even a couple of bombs will do some pretty good damage. Yeah, nice. Alright, so we did pretty good damage there. We killed our own Rifleman, unfortunately, but that's not a big deal. We should be able to get back on these pads and just fire the missile. Yep. Alright, pretty easy. Widowmakers do lose to Orca Bombers, so those ones we could have killed with Orca Bomber Spam. 
But generally speaking, a deck like this, you don't really want to get into a... You don't really want to get into a tech war, because tech will beat you eventually. Okay, so now we're playing the Sniper Sandstorm deck. So the aim of this deck basically is to use the economy you gain by using snipers. Snipers are very, very efficient. They gain you a lot of money, generally speaking. Uh, use the economy gained by using snipers to make a sandstorm off one harvester. And then with Liang, sandstorm is basically indestructible. Alright, so opponent has opened harvester chems, which is a very odd choice. We've opened dogs, which obviously works out well for us. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna get our dogs on his on his chems. Just gonna keep making dogs for now. We'll uh, we'll get snipers as soon as we have pop count for them. All right, let's get the snipers out. Should be enough to to win the missile. We'll move a dog around here to block in case he sends the chems up. All right, looks like a pretty easy missile. Oh, hang on, hang on. Okay, cool. <laughs> Almost managed to throw it there. Okay, so we block for our snipers with our dogs. Take out the chem troopers. And then we just save up for this sandstorm. We'll go and see if he's double harvester as well. He is. Okay, let's get some missiles. We just want to keep making cheap units until we get the sandstorm. We're only like 60 off now. So we should be able to get sandstorm as our next unit. Not sure if he's intentionally pop capping this dog. I think maybe he is. Alright, there it goes. Get the sandstorm. And then basically you just park a sandstorm with a sniper behind it and that kills everything in the game effectively. Uh, so I need my snipers to take care of that. Get my sandstorm over here. Put Liang going down. Dodge the explosion, and yeah, pretty easy win. Didn't really get to show off how insane the Sandstorm is, but you know, you get the idea. Sandstorm, Sandstorm with Liang Drone will win against two missiles, missile troopers. Alright, now we're on Air Mammoth, which I'm sure a lot of people know. Building online. Unit ready. So the, this deck is all about stalling the missile and going, so you go double harvester and you keep the missile not charging as much as possible. Opponent appears to be trying to keep it charging, although now he's putting his second unit on the same pad, so maybe not. Normally I'd go for a second harvester here, but I don't know if he can see it. Yeah, I think I think he can see with spawn point. I'm going to wait. The, uh, the economy ramp is actually slightly better the longer you wait. So it's better to get your harvester later as long as you continue to stall. Building online. Okay, so he is not charging the missile here, which is good for me. We'll get Drone Swarm out just so it'll start harassing his rifles. Oh, there's some bikes, that's fine. Alright, so we want to keep stalling. So we'll do this. Probably going to make a Mohawk here to stall, although maybe just missiles is better actually. Yeah, I probably should just make missiles. We'll suicide this guy. Okay, so here's a Jade Chems deck. This is bad for me because it means if we lose the first missile, he can just blow up our base. So it is quite important that we uh, that we stall the first missile either for a really long time or that we just end up winning it. So we're going to move these missiles here to try and stall. And we need to kill Chems quickly because they're going to stop us from being able to stall effectively. Let's get the Mohawk out for the, for the bikes. He is also harassing our base, which is actually pretty good for him. Because it does mean that he's more likely to uh, to kill our base with Jade. Alright, if we can get a Mammoth on the first missile, then that's amazing, obviously. Alright, we did get Mammoth first missile. Don't know if it's going to be in time. Oh, it is in time. Very nice. Alright, if we win the first missile, we're locked to win because we have a Mammoth tank. Nice. Okay, it's basically impossible for us to lose the game now. Crush this uh, health tank, and we'll try and run over these uh, these chems as well. I'm trying to save up for another mammoth tank here. All right, cool. So now we have a second mammoth tank to defend our base. We'll send this one at his harvesters and his base. Nice. Don't need to worry about his bike on our harvester. That doesn't do anything. 
Atlas missile does like half damage to the Mammoth tank, don't care at all. Uh, oh, Mammoth Freeze. Classic blue stacks Mammoth Freeze. Shouldn't be a problem. We're so far ahead, we can afford to, to have a freeze here and still win the game. Oh, it's a long one today. I think we won the game. I think that's why it's doing, uh, why it's not speeding up to catch back up. I think because the mammoth has killed the base. Yeah, it did. Okay. Um, yeah. There you go, guys. <laughs> proper, proper mammoth freeze there. All right. So now we're playing the Inferno spam deck. Which is very similar in nature to the uh, to the um, Orca spam deck. The idea is just to achieve air superiority with an air unit like Phantom or um, Phantom or Hammerhead, and then to use bombers to take over the ground units. So we're gonna make some scavengers here, and then we're gonna send in our rifles. These scavengers will make back the money that the uh, that, that, that we that the rifles cost because they get back ten every time something not there every time something dies near them. And then we'll go buggy. But he's intentionally not killing my units to try and stop me getting the Tiberium bounty. It goes straight into Giga. Holy crap! Kind of insane. All right, so we'll make some more scavengers. And we'll put the scavengers, push the scavengers onto his um, Giga. We're gonna need an Inferno for the Giga, which we're still a little ways away from. Probably not gonna get there for first missile. But here we go. We do get there for first missile, but I don't I think this uh, this chem buggy is just gonna kill everything. Or we can stop it. Yeah, the chem buggy does kill everything. We we'll get rid of the Giga. Probably want to go double harvester here, to be honest. He's definitely going to be spamming phantoms to counter these infernos. Which means I'll need to win an inferno, a uh, phantom mirror. These riflemen should kill this uh, chem buggy. Yeah, they do. Nice. I do lose the inferno. That's a pretty big deal, actually. The new one. We'll boost it to kill this chem buggy. Need some more infernos here. Alright, so we're gonna go over here. Still on this back pad. Do fire that missile, very nice. Get some more infernos. Basically just wanna make only infernos forever. We get a double kill with that one, yep, very nice. Make some more infernos. We're gonna go for the base as well. Infernos do a lot of damage to a base. You only need two or three inferno bombs if you hit two tiles with them to kill a base. As you can see, the base is almost dead. Need one more Inferno Bomb to take it out. Alright, and there you go. Inferno Spam. Uh, Nick Cool obviously has the Phantom, but it took him too long to get it out. And ground forces just can't really fight off the Inferno Spam. That's why you go Double Harvester. Okay, now we're on the Chemical Buggy Giga deck, which actually is the deck that uh, Nick Cool was just playing against us. Although we have Banshee instead of Phantom. Uh, it, originally the deck is, is a Noid Hex creation. He's the guy who started playing the Giga Chemical Buggy first, I think. And he prefers Banshee in the deck, so I've just, uh, I've just gone with his build for it. Alright, so opponents open wheels. Gonna make a second laser. With two lasers, you can push into wheels pretty easily. He goes flamers. Oh, I haven't seen flamers in a while. Okay. 
We're gonna back up. We're gonna let the rifleman fight. And then we're gonna get a chemical buggy for these flamers. Hopefully it'll be in time for the missile. Looks like it should be. We'll get on this pad. There's a tank. All right, we're gonna run away from the tank and leave the uh, lasers to fight it. Move these lasers down to block here. And we'll get the chemical buggy on the third pad. So we take the missile pretty easily. Very nice. But for tank, we need Giga Cannon. Looks like he really wants my harvester. I'm gonna pull the harvester back. Defend it with my lasers. Then we're gonna make a Giga Cannon and boost it. And we're gonna block this tank, so keep it in range of the Giga Cannon, like so. That ensures the Giga Cannon cleans it up nicely. Looks like he really wants that harvester, so we're gonna block with the lasers. Make sure he can't get it. And then we're gonna have the Giga Cannon finish off his tank. Alright, so there goes the chemical buggy, no big deal. Move the Giga up. Oh, hang on. Need to protect it properly. We're gonna boost the Giga and get lasers in front of it. I'm gonna make another Giga since he's only making tanks. And we'll move this Giga up as well. Alright, boost this Giga. Put something on this back pad. Should clean up everything pretty easily with the Gigas though. Yep, very nice. Alright. Giga, pretty strong unit, can confirm. Alright, so now we're on the Jade Laser Drone deck. So we're going to open with the Militants. This deck is basically just all about getting the first missile. Um, the deck is designed to be as powerful as possible early game. And then once you fire the first missile, you just use Jade to kill their base. You don't even need Chemical Warriors to do it, you can literally just do it with Jade. That's why I'm aggressively charging the missile here. So we're going to pull back, make sure he can't get a 2v1 against us. He's now stalling, so we're going to go straight into Chems. Which lets us push his rifles. We should actually have done this, this was a mistake. I should have just moved off the pad, obviously. To continue charging. He's gone Double Harvester, that's good for us, because Double Harvester decks almost always lose the first missile. And then we can just kill his base with Jade. Alright, so we're going to charge these pads. We need fights for the, uh, for the drone swarm. Oops, we'll misclick there. Alright, these bikes should take care of this. And we'll send them to this pad to make sure we fire the missile. Okay, there's the missile. So you go double harvester. This is just to ensure that you can afford infinite units to throw at their base. And then we uh, we send some stuff forward. So we're going to start making chems and bikes, and then we're going to probably go into um, phantom once once the economy starts ramping up. We'll make a phantom. But the main aim at the moment is just to get chems to his base. If the chems get to his base, it's a completely free win. If they don't, you still can win pretty easily, but it's a little bit more tricky. There's a sandstorm. That's unfortunate. Sandstorm is one of the units that can block you getting to their base. Looks like he's going directly for my harvesters. Okay, I'm okay with this. I'm just going to go for his base. Yeah, he's just going straight for my harvesters. I don't care about that, really. Alright, so we get the chem warriors on the base. We need catalyst missile. And then we start harassing the base. Now, one thing he could do is base race us with the sandstorms. That would be the only way we lose this game, I think. Alright, so I think if we get vision, we win. That catalyst missile should win the game. Yep, and that's why the deck is super miserable. <laughs> that right there is why the deck is so miserable. Alright, so now we're on the, um, the artillery deck. This is basically the same as air, air avatar deck, but with, um, with artillery instead of avatar. So we're going to open with the rifles. We see dogs. We'll, uh, we'll need to make sure these don't block our harvester. That's why we're going to do this. And then we're going to get missiles. We don't really want to be charging here, so I'm going to move off the pad. Now, normally on the artillery deck, you can do it on one harvester. It's very unusual to get a second harvester with this deck. 
We're going to go straight into laser drones here as well because he keeps making dogs. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have a slingshot because that would be one of the best units against us. Ah, he does have slingshot. That's super annoying. Slingshot is really bad for me. It means that I have to... I basically have to get to um, artillery to win the game because most of my deck is turned off by the slingshot. All right, slingshot plus satyr kills everything except for artillery in our deck. So now we absolutely have to get to the artillery. We might be able to steal this first missile if we're lucky. Although I'm not sure. It's going to be tough. No, I don't think so. Almost. If we'd, been able to, if we'd been able to kill that slingshot, we would have been alright. Okay, so we have to get the artillery out, basically. So we're just going to save up for that now. Maybe make some missiles just to guard it. Alright, there's the artillery, so we get this set up. Now we just need to protect this from air, basically. We're gonna get some more lasers. If he has something like a mammoth tank. Oh shit. <laughs> iron cannon's bad for me for sure. Alright, so he does trade iron cannon for artillery, but the problem is that we don't have time to set up a new artillery before the game ends. Or maybe we do. He's actually not doing anything here. Alright, get the artillery set up. Need to get onto this pad. Boost the artillery. Should be able to just block him from getting on these pads. Alright, cool. I don't know why he, he just let me have that for some reason. He could have moved something onto that pad. Now, hopefully he doesn't have Mammoth Tank. The Iron Cannon is a pretty big issue. <laughs> not going to lie. Let's see if he's Double Harvester. He's not. Okay, that's good for us. Get a new artillery. A well-timed Iron Cannon is probably going to win him a missile. And he only needs one missile at this point. So what we maybe need to try and do is set up two artillery. It looks like his deck is pretty weak to artillery, apart from the Iron Cannon. So if we can maybe set up a double artillery outside of range of each other, so he can't Iron Cannon them both, that would be really cool. Yeah, I'm going to build my second artillery now and try and get it set up down here. I want to keep my units moving so he can't Iron Cannon. Alright, well, I don't know what he's doing, but that was pretty easy. I guess he just ran out of money. Yeah, he just ran out of money. Okay, he should have saved his iron cannon for end of missile, and then he would have won. Mission accomplished. All right, so final game, we're playing Fnatic Aggro. This is probably the least toxic of the decks. This one's actually kind of just a normal deck, but Fnatics are super broken, so that's why it's on the list. Honestly, um, it might have made more sense to do an, another GDI deck and one less Nod deck because I think GDI just has way more toxic text than Nod. Oh, wow. What is this? Okay, so our opponent has gone Dog Dog MLRS No Harvester, which is insane. So we're just going to make some missiles. We'll keep the wheels near his Harvester spawn, like near his Tiberium, in case he does decide to make a Harvester. And we're, gonna, we're not going to go in with a single missile because that'll get beaten up by the dogs. So we're going to wait for a second one. Alright, here we're going to go and block this pad because if he gets onto the third pad, we can't stall anymore. And we do need to stall here. So we're going to block this and kill his dogs on the middle pad. Then we'll move up. And we should win the missile now. Oh, no, I let him on by accident. Whoops. Oh, well, no big deal. We still kill that. We get some bites now. Once the MRS is gone, we just can make bites. I don't know what my opponent thinks he's doing here. This is a terrible play by him. Like, no Harv MRS. That's not a deck. Oh, there's the Harvester. A little late to the party. Let's go and harass it. I'm gonna get a tank and then we're gonna get Fanatics. Jump Jet Troopers? Okay. Looks like some kind of a fortress deck. Get the Fnatics out. Should be able to get this Harvester. Alright, let's get more Fnatics and more tanks. Fnatic and tank is basically the only things I really want to make in this deck. There's the double boosted tank. 
Probably the tank is so insane. This is kind of why the, this deck is on the list, just because of like the, the boosted tank is so disgusting. All right, well, kind of just slaughtering him all over the field. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what this guy was thinking, going for a no half MLRS build. That was insane. All right, and we win. So there's ten and zero with the top ten most frustrating decks. Um. These were not played in any specific order. This was just the order that I, uh, just the order that I'd put them in when I was loading them up. So yeah, uh, definitely not from least toxic to most toxic or anything like that. I think most of the GDI decks are the most toxic ones. And uh, yeah, in case you're wondering, um, if you go 10-0, the free track is really, really good value. Like for 275 diamonds, this is a very good reward, mainly because you get back something like 70, 80 diamonds. You get, you get back like a hundred and something diamonds from these um, uncommon crates. But the premium is not that good. So I wouldn't recommend the premium on this one. I'd say save your premiums for showdown and resource and champions. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed that. I know uh, I know it's it's more interesting when, there, when there's multiple decks as well. But yeah, those I think are like the 10 most toxic decks. I wouldn't recommend playing them if you're under leveled though. A lot of the really toxic things like Sandstorm and MG are only good when they're higher level than your opponents. When they're lower level, they're really bad. Because it's all about them becoming indestructible with Liangron. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed that. And I'll see you next time.